It is Sunday afternoon, and I know we said we're not going to vlog today, which we're not, but I have a Packer brisket, which is one of these big, giant briskets that you can get from like Sam's Club or Costco or something like that. And we're going to cook that for tomorrow. I'm actually going to start the cook tonight, somewhere around 9 or 10 o'clock. I'm going to try a little bit different method and follow the advice of Chris Bayer and go ahead and start it really, really low tonight and then wrap it first thing in the morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim up this brisket and get it ready for tonight. Now I will admit, I am not the greatest at trimming the brisket. I know just enough to be dangerous. But basically what we're gonna do is trim off a bunch of the excess fat and then separate the point from the flat. Now when I trim it, I do like to have a couple little spots where the meat peeks through to get the rub into it. This looks pretty good here. I also like to take off all this meat that's starting to get hard and brown. Next, we're gonna go ahead and season this up and we're just gonna use the Redmond's organic garlic pepper. And again, I like to have a couple little places where the seasoning can get into the meat. There. Now I'm gonna let this sit in the refrigerator till it's time to put it on the grill tonight. One thing, don't throw this out, all this extra fat, don't throw this out. This will make an amazing tallow. So we're actually gonna do a video on how to turn this into a great cooking grease. Okay, it is 7.30 in the morning. Let's take a look at these briskets. Oh, wow, look at those briskets. Wow, that looks amazing. These may be the best looking briskets I've ever done. Let's take a look at the temperature. So we got 160 degrees. Wow, they did perfect. 150. Obviously, they have to go a lot longer. 156. So what we're going to do is we're going to let them go for another 30, 40 minutes while I pull comments. And then we're going to wrap them and finish them up. What is that? Our son has requested <laughs> smoked pork belly like a brisket for Thanksgiving. Smoke it like a brisket. And since I need to clean out our freezer to get ready for our cow, or our, our side of beef, or our whole beef. Yeah, let's not name it. I um, took the pork belly that I have in the freezer out. We're gonna let this defrost so that we can cook it for Thanksgiving. Let me have the coffee over there. Ugh. I haven't moved the, um, whatchamacallit, the Vitamix after we did the uh, banana cream pie. This, what do you not have confidence in me? This is a, an absolutely gorgeous mug, but is it big enough for my coffee or we're at least going to have two in it? Well, you're leaving, so I figure you only need a little cup of coffee. Thank you. We can have some more coffee later because not, you can. I'm not leaving forever. Because it's Monday and we have a live stream, but I am leaving because car stuff. For Anthony. Yeah, Anthony car stuff. So I'm really glad that we we still have like mom duties to do. That that makes me really, really happy. Like I'm probably the only person that jumps out like, yes, I can take you to the mechanic in the morning. Cause I feel like I'm still needed in some way, even though they're adults. He's actually getting his car cleaned. I'll take it. Whatever we can do. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we go live on Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. What's today's date? Today's date is Monday, November... 22nd. Monday, November 22nd. So welcome to day 23 of the road back where we're reincorporating foods back into our life. Today is going to be a yummy day. I am very excited about today and I started getting excited about it last night 
when instead of time to make the donuts, he actually got out of bed and go, time to make the brisket. Well, I, I'm trying a different method. Normally I get up at like five in the morning and I start the brisket and it's done around four o'clock in the afternoon. But we were going, one Roscoe, of our cats is just crying Roscoe, around. Roscoe, we're over here. <laughs> he doesn't like for us to be out of pocket. No. So, uh, I was originally planning on making it for Saturday, but I wasn't going to be home in the morning, so I was trying to figure out what would I do, and I had talked to Chris Bear, because he a lot of times will start him the night before, so I said, well, let me try that. So he said, put the Rectac on the lowest setting possible, which is under 200 degrees. All right. Start it at like 8 or 9 o'clock at night. At night. Let it go all night, so there was a fire burning on the patio all night. I was completely immersed in season two of Tiger King, I couldn't think of anything else. I was completely distracted. That last night was the night to do it. Yeah. So uh, it's been going all night. I have to say, I opened it up this morning. It is the most beautiful brisket I think I have ever made. It's pretty. It is. It is really pretty. I also tried it a little different. I did fat side up. Normally, I cook my brisket fat cap down, but I decided let me try something different. Just go all out. Go fat side up. And now I'm gonna go wrap it, and we're gonna let it go like a present? at like 215 degrees until we're ready to eat it. It's gonna be perfect. I can't wait. I'm so excited for that. So yesterday we released our blood results. Yeah. Uh, some mixed emotions in the comment section. Most really? people are impressed and they're excited about them and they're thankful because they're in a situation like that where they have a high HDL and they have low triglycerides, but they have high total cholesterol. And of course, after reading, you know, things from Dave Feldman and watching Dr. Barry and Dr. Silas and Dr. Sean Baker and other people, they're they're not as concerned. Right. Um, but a couple of comments, just one person had said, do they think that if we were to eat less fat, our LDL would go down? And first of all, I'm not concerned about my LDL. But again, that's me. I'm not right. concerned about my LDL because I'm happy with all of the other numbers. But also, honestly, I don't even think when we were on beef, butter, bacon, and egg, we were eating a tremendous amount of fat. We were eating close to one to one. We weren't adding a whole bunch of fat because even though, like right now, we're each drinking one tablespoon of butter in our coffee with one egg split between the two of I'm us. I'm getting less egg and butter right now. Uh -huh. Um, we were eating a lot of lean meats right. too. And that's yeah. one of the reasons we were doing the butter in addition because, you know, we were eating leaner meats like roasts and stuff. But on days when we were eating something like a ribeye, you know, we didn't have as much extra butter because we really do try to stick more to one to one. But honestly, I'm really, really happy with those numbers. If you have not seen that video, I will leave a link for it right over Rachel's head. But I also know that, you know, your numbers change. They, your cholesterol is going to bounce around. We're in the process of losing fat. So it's not a huge concern to me so long as our VLDL is low, our triglycerides are low, our fasting insulin is low, and our uh, C-peptide and our C-reactive score are low. I felt like it was a victory for us. On the one hand, I felt like we had break, broken through um, the chains that Goody Beats talked about on our live stream on our 11 on 11. And that was, we had a fear of information mm -hmm. that was really dangerous, I think, to our success. Like, yep. for so long, we didn't want to face a doctor. And it wasn't because doctors aren't nice to talk to. It was honestly because we were afraid to face the tests that they would do, like this. We were yep. afraid of what the information would bring back because we know that there's no sugar coating information that comes back with black blood work so yeah. we were very that was a huge victory for yeah us to get blood we work were done. really pleased that we did that for ourselves. and then the other thing that i'm really happy about is it may not appeal to everyone but there's somebody out there that has very bad numbers and their own opinion and their doctor's opinion and they're thinking man it's going to take me years to change what's going on in my body. And my prayer is that somebody will see, hey, look what happened in 44 days. Maybe just committing to something will help bring results 
faster than years. Yeah. It won't be years. Yeah. You know, that's my prayer. Yeah. For And again, this is not medical advice. This is just how we feel about our own personal journey and our own numbers. We're not doctors or nurses or health practitioners or anything like that. Please consult your doctor, especially if you're concerned about things like that. The other question that came up from a few people was, do we have a CAC score, which we have not gotten uh, a calcium scan because we don't have a doctor who's willing to uh, prescribe one of those tests. So if anybody happens to know a way uh, where you can go get it without a doctor, kind of like you can do your own labs, yeah, let, let us know, know down in the comment section because I know it's a pretty inexpensive scan at around $100, but you, from what I understand, have to have a doctor's prescription to go get it and you have to have a doctor that's willing to have the results sent to them. And we don't have that right now, but it is something that I am very interested in doing. Uh, before you go, I want to let you know, you know, we made that... Um, banana cream pie. Yes. Uh, link for that video is going to be right over Rachel's head. But uh, we had two extra pies after making it. So we're going to send one over to Becky's house Yay! for the boys. And the other one I have decorated. I've put it in the freezer. And I'm thinking we're going to bring that to Thanksgiving dinner at John's house. And we are not going to Lion Don't King. Don't Lion King it. That this is a keto pie with no sugar. And I want to see how fast does it go? Because, you know, when you go someplace and you put Cheeto on it, nobody wants it. Yeah. But in my personal experience, when you go someplace and you bring food and you don't put Cheeto on it. Right. And just tell people, oh, that's a banana green pie. That is the most delicious chili. It's the first thing to go. It's interesting that... Um, you know, we did have a, a keto bake that we brought to a um, a, a potluck recently, a Friendsgiving, right. and it went really, really fast. And it was labeled keto, but I think that people have enough trust, like in us, that we're not going to bring something right. that's not going to be tasty. But I think, honestly, the funnier thing is when you bring it and people kind of assume Hey, you're, it's no, you know, it's Thanksgiving, so you're probably off plan, and ch and this is a cheat day, and so I can partake of your cheat day by, right. you know, you know, eating a, a slice of of this pie, and in reality, they're taking a cheat day from sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Anthony is over there waiting for you, so let's pick this up later on. So I've wrapped the briskets now in a foil boat. I'm not going to cover the top because I want to have a nice little bark on there. We're going to go ahead and check the temperature, and. Uh, this one's at 144 here, 164 here, 160 here, 158. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna bump the temperature on the grill up to 225 degrees and we're gonna let this keep going. We're shooting for a temperature of about 205 to 210 degrees. Mmm, eggs. And I think I'm gonna steal Joe's coffee. Uh, you're not stealing my coffee. I actually poured coffee into that cup for you because I know you like drinking out of a big cup. I do. I thought I was getting away with something for a minute. <laughs> I made you three eggs mm. the way you like them. Thank you. Even though they're overcooked. In a tablespoon of butter and then I put a bunch of Redmond's on the grill as well as over the top of them. I'm not really hungry right now. I'm sure I'll be hungry like later on. Right now I need to finish pulling comments for Keto on the Couch because as usual, Joe is behind the eight ball. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Hanging on. <clears throat> Hang in there. Keto on the Couch is done. Couple technical issues. I don't understand what was wrong with the color. Now I'm gonna have to find time to go mess with all that before the live stream, before we record our next video. Recording the video is not as big of a deal because I can color edit, but I can't color edit a live stream, which kind of annoys me. It's super frustrating. There's and There's always something. I, I feel like sometimes, you know, when you're just trying to do something positive, there's always going to be an obstacle, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. If you're trying to do something positive for your health, if you're trying to volunteer somewhere, that's, that's when you're like, oh my gosh, I'm out of gas or I have a flat tire. Like, I mean, it just, it seems like they just go together and you have to decide we're going through. Like, I don't care what happens. <laughs> like, let's just keep going. So I need to go edit that banana 
uh, pudding pie recipe because I know you want to get it up before do. Thanksgiving. In case anybody wants to make it, they got to shop for the ingredients. You said you have to go to the store and get popsicle sticks or something? Big, thick, wooden popsicle sticks. Just want to let you know that if the brisket is ready before you get home, uh -huh. I will be eating it without no! you. And I can't promise there will be anything left because brisket, my favorite cut I of meat. will be home. So I'm heading over to surprise my nephews with a pre-Thanksgiving banana cream pie. Let's go ahead and check the brisket. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. That looks delicious. Okay, I'm really looking more for the poke test over the temperature here. And you can see that is just going in like butter, 205 degrees, that is perfect. Yeah, look at that, 205 degrees. Oh yeah, check this one. These are done. So what we're gonna do is, this one, it says 198 here, but it's got a good poke test. We're gonna go ahead and cover these up and wait until lunch. Briskets are done. These really look like the best briskets we've ever made. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is get all the juices out of this aluminum foil. If I can do this without making a mess. Please do it without making a mess. Look, it's already doing it. It okay, wants to. Okay, we're gonna to. go into a bowl. This was a good plan. Well, my thing is, is we can pour that back over the brisket. Very proud of you though for having the bowl ready. Okay, so that's one. Here's the thing is, this is all good fat. Look at that. That's a beautiful stream of deliciousness right there. Okay. Now we can go ahead and slice these. That one over there. Rid of this. Which one are we gonna slice first? Okay, ready? Mmm, look at oh, that. It's pulling apart. It's That's already a good falling thing. apart. It's got a nice bark on it. Oh yeah, look at that. That is beautiful. You don't have to do turkey for the holidays. You can always do a brisket. This is my favorite part of making something. Is me trying it? Giving it to you. Thank you. I'm gonna have a little piece. Mmm. This is my favorite part of you cooking something too. Tasting it. Mm. You wanna try out the point? Let's get right to the point. Okay, so the point is generally fattier. You know I love that. <gasps> Look at that. Oh yeah. Now you can turn the point into burnt ends, but I don't want to. I just want to eat it like this. I want it all. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Mm. I definitely think I need to sample that and just make sure, you know, that it's safe to eat, really. This is really just for, for food testing safety precautions. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm hmm It does get better by dunking it. Some lunches are better than other lunches. <laughs> this is one of those lunches. So we're having brisket. It's beef. Brisket is probably my favorite cut of beef. I mean, I'm really enjoying the roast, but brisket, Come it's on. just up there. You know, the only thing with brisket is takes a long time to make it properly. The best things come to those who wait. So just to review, the way I made this was we put it in the smoker at the low setting on the Rectech, which is under 200 degrees, smoking it probably somewhere around 180 to 190 degrees overnight. Started it at nine o'clock at night, and then uh, this morning around eight o'clock, I bumped the temperature up to 220 degrees, and then uh, wrapped it in a boat so I didn't cover the top, and I let it go till we got to an internal temperature of 205 degrees, and the probe test was 
like going into butter. And this is crazy. This is what we got. Now, Chris actually finishes his off in the oven. Oh. The only reason I don't put it in the oven is because I don't want to heat up the house. Plus, I'm using the oven for something else right now. I don't mind the extra little pellets. I figure I'm either burning electricity or I'm burning pellets, but somewhere I'm spending money to cook it. Right. Uh, now, I did give you a little bit of the juices to pour over the top, the extra fat and stuff. That does not make me uh, sad. The rest I poured over the brisket and put it into mm. a storage container. And here's the cool part about this, when it comes out like this, you don't even need a knife. Fork tender. It is, it just pulls apart. Look at that. I just love just this. Just using my fork. Let's go ahead and try this. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's, it takes a lot of cooking time, mm -hmm. but once it's done with that first bite, you're like, oh yeah, I remember why this is awesome. I remember why this is worth it, right? So yeah. good. I think this is the best brisket I've ever made. I mean, it, it's not dry at all. It's not at all dry. It's it perfect. is just, there's got a nice smoke flavor, but it's not overly smoky. It, it pulls apart super easy. And I love brisket, but we generally don't go out to barbecue places because it's, it's so expensive. expensive. I mean, we have a local barbecue place here and a pound of brisket, if you want to go buy a pound of brisket, it's like $29. And my feeling is, is I'd rather just go buy a full brisket. And just do it ourselves. And yes, it's going to cost me, it used to cost like two fifty dollars a pound. Now it's up to like $4 a pound. But still, I think this brisket, if I remember right, was like 60 or $70, but we have a lot more than just pound, two pounds of food. Yeah. I mean, these two plates alone would probably cost us about 60 bucks if we went out to a restaurant, and mm -hmm. we still have more than half of the brisket left, so. So good. Oh, it's so awesome. You went to the store, did you find anything? I did find a couple of little gifts for our upcoming advent calendar when is that supposed to start because i haven't even begun december 1st we're in trouble because i i haven't begun and isn't december 1st like next week it is and we'll be camping mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm trying to get ahead of it so that you have things to open up on our camping trip oh okay are you watching harry potter again i am <laughs> and it's completely normal behavior how many times have we seen the harry potter franchise oodles as somebody who grew up in the 70s with the original, the best Star Wars franchise, being episode four, five, and six, I have to say I'm becoming more of a Harry Potter fan than a Star Wars fan. <gasps> Shut your mouth. Don't let Steven hear that. I like, know. <laughs> but I don't know. There's something about the Harry Potter universe that is just awesome. It's just fun. I like, what's your favorite movie? Oh gosh, that's like trying to pick a favorite kid. I really do like Order of the Phoenix. And I, I mean, I, I like the Deathly Hallows too, one and two, although I know I, I'm not a fan of the first one. Feelings of it. I like uh, the third one, The Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah, I just really same. like that one, especially when he starts finding out like some of the secrets and stuff like that. I like Severus. So I take it you are like done for the day. I am so full of briskets. I am finishing, like I added ice balls to the rest of the pot of coffee. So I'm just kind of drinking my coffee and watching my Harry Potter. So are we making this a two day vlog? I think so. What is this thing that you have behind us? Like this paper that you have pinned up here? Oh, it's just getting me ready for like advent calendar i like i'm gonna have stickers that's on my headboard and so in the morning before i wake up i just want to remember what is important every day of the holiday season because a lot of times you know you've just you've got a lot to do maybe it's just a lot of work or even sometimes volunteer opportunities like on the day of you're like oh yeah i've got to go do that or serve here and I just want to remember, like, this is a joyous thing. It's not that I have to do certain things. It's that I get to do certain things. So we have a lot of brisket left. Do you want to do, like, eggs and brisket for breakfast? <gasps> we can make that on the Blackstone. That sounds like a perfect Scramble breakfast. Scramble the brisket into the eggs. When we do that, I love scrambled eggs. Well, somebody was just saying in a premiere, I think yesterday, that sometimes they have breakfast for dinner mm -hmm. and sometimes they have dinner for breakfast and i thought okay we've done breakfast for dinner but we don't do a lot of dinner for breakfast i do have to say as full as i am 
that banana cream pie that's in the refrigerator. Is it calling your name? It's like calling my name. So I'm gonna come in here and sit with you and watch some more Harry Potter. Good morning. Day Tuesday, 22. Day Tuesday. It's day 22 of the road back. Mm. We need to make this more. Yesterday was relaxed day. We're starting off the day. We have between the two of us five eggs, so two and a half eggs a piece. And then some of the brisket. And what I did was I took the brisket, I cut a couple of slices off, shredded it up a little bit, threw it on the black stone to heat it up, and then poured scrambled eggs over the top of it. And you have like kind of like corned beef and eggs, but it's brisket instead of corned beef. So it's it doesn't so have the much seasonings. Better. I, I like this better than corned beef and eggs. Really? Yeah. No. I know you're a corned beef fan. I love corned beef. Then we each have a cup of coffee with one tablespoon of butter. There's trace elements of egg in there. Because what I did was, when I take the eggs, I find, especially because I have to use the Vitamix in the morning anyway. Right. It's easier to take the eggs, throw them in the Vitamix, turn it on low for a couple of seconds, and then use that as to scramble the eggs instead of pulling out another bowl and beating it. Hello. Then I pour the coffee into the Vitamix to kind of clean out the egg out of the Vitamix. Now I have been using the Vitamix as the egg scrambler for quite some time now. I know that, but my I'm only doing it out of laziness oh. of not having to oh. clean an extra bowl. Well, mine came out of it laziness too. No worries about that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. I'm always motivated by efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. So, I have a great test for today. Okay. This is going to be a good one. Only it's not going to be within this video. We're going to start it in this video, but we're going to finish it in a complete review video. Okay, and what is that? We're gonna try every flavor of ice chips. Oh my lord. So xylitol. Xylitol. Is, We're gonna test xylitol it on It is us. the day. Because why not? So when we were in Las Vegas, ice chips were there. These things are amazing. Yeah, and delicious. They're pretty much just xylitol and flavoring. That's what they are. Yeah. They are really good, but they can be addictive. Like I could easily eat this whole can in a day, but we need to do this video before Anthony finds the rest of the stash. Right, he keeps because he's finding tins. For example, this one here is root beer. We have not had any. Anthony has eaten half the can. Yeah. Because he loves them. So we've got to get a piece in. He's going to save us from overindulging. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, son. So if you don't know what ice chips are, they're kind of like a mint but they have a ton of different flavors from yeah. margarita to strawberry to peppermint to candy cane to root beer float. Yep. They even have a black licorice. And Did you get that one. We they sent me one. Oh. <laughs> uh we with our own money when we were in Las Vegas, we purchased every single flavor except for 3 cuz they didn't have any left and she mailed me those. So here we go. If you're curious, the ingredients in these are xylitol and then 2% or less of natural flavors in cream of tartar and calcium stearate. So that's what's in them. A serving is two pieces, but you really have to go by grams right. because they're every all, piece shards. is different. Yeah. So for example, you have a piece like this. Right. But then you have a piece like this. So that would be Joe's piece and the other one would be my piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. So the better idea would be to weigh it out. There are supposed to be 25 servings in this can. Five calories per serving. Zero fat. Zero protein. And it's two total carbs, but then it's xylitol. It's two sugar alcohols. Right. The only issue with xylitol is it is not zero on the glycemic index. It's like a 13, if I remember right. So it does cause a slight insulin reaction, but not like eating sugar right. or eating a bunch of other kind of foods. Best thing to do is like have it like around meal time or something like that. I'm starting to learn that a lot of things impact our insulin, even like just eating pure fat can oh, have yeah. a, a small insulin reaction. So before we eat, we're going to do little pieces because we're going to literally try every single flavor on video. So... I have not had this one yet. This is root beer float. We really, we've had, what we had? We've had, we've we tried have, the lemon. Right. 
the candy apple, I sour. think. The sour apple, and we've tried mint. Not since Vegas. We've just tried them in the past. Think. Oh, yeah. You don't like root beer. This reminds me of the root beer we used to get in Lancaster, like real Pennsylvania. Root like real root beer. Yeah. We mm. used to buy like the little extracts and make our own. Then wow. we went keto. That is good. That is really good. But I mean, that is hearty, traditional, homemade root beer. I want to try taking ice chips and putting them into ice cream. I want to put them in the creamy. Yeah, so like maybe just a few pieces of like one good. of the mint ones and add it to keto chow chocolate mint, something like that. That is excellent. So we're gonna do that later on. So that's what we're gonna test today. We're gonna test xylitol because tomorrow's Wednesday. So right. if we need a buffer we're, day, if we're feeling kind of crappy between now and you know Thanksgiving, I'm okay with that. So long as I don't feel crappy on Thanksgiving. What do you think? I think it's a good plan. Okay, let's see. It's so good. It's awesome. Oh, I meant to tell you, you had gone to sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we messaged a doctor, a keto-friendly doctor, and um, they are going to prescribe for us or give us an order for a calcium test, which awesome. is the last test that we want to get, but you really can't get it without a doctor. And we don't have a doctor that's willing to order that exam for us. Now so, we do. And most insurance companies actually, can you believe this? It's like one of the best identifiers of, are your arteries clogged? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, most insurance companies don't pay for it. Wouldn't you want so that we're, information? So we're going to look for calcium buildup and insurance companies don't want to pay for it. So, yeah, we don't want to know. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, it's like a lot of doctors don't want to order A1C tests if they don't think that you're going to be diabetic. Just but surprise us. Surprise it's us It's such later. a great test. It'll be it's the same thing fun. with NMR when it comes to cholesterol. They order usually basic cholesterol, but we don't get into all of the, like, what are the particle sizes and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing that. I don't know when. We have to wait for the order to come in, and then we obviously have to go get it. Uh, but the test is like between $100 to $150, depending on where you go. So we have to look around for a place to go. But I'm excited to get that final test to just know that we're good. What is going on? Yep. So what's on your docket for today? Staff meetings. Mm-hmm. Meetings, kids stuff. We got to go to an we appointment later. We have later. an appointment at 1 o'clock together. Mm-hmm. So I got a race. So you're going to do that. Anthony and I have a couple of houses to uh, cut. Then um, I'm going to just work on videos. Still trying to ha like really hammer down a couple of recipe videos we've been working on. And it's, it's just been like epic fails or this doesn't work or this isn't right. I love it when you do something like the banana pudding. And the banana pudding was like a hit by number two. Like number one was there. And then trial number two was this is perfection. Right. Right? But most it wasn't recipes. like 50 epic fails. Like, I don't know how Steve from Serious Keto does it because, and he consumes all the failures. Yeah, because you hate wasting you all hate of wasting the it. materials. We try to consume failures, but at least if, if a failure doesn't We're work. We're much bigger failures, apparently. So long as it's like, good healthy food for the animals i'll give it to the animals sometimes so if we're just doing like a beef thing or something like that our chickens will eat it yeah where you're like these 10 eggs didn't come out right like i don't want to have to eat 10 right. eggs and then be eating it later like doing a bread recipe if the bread doesn't come out right you know i can feed it to somebody right i made you dinner I love when you make me dinner. I mean, I like to cook, but I've got so much going on right now, trying to edit videos, get ready to film some other videos. We have Thanksgiving on Friday, on Thursday. No pressure. No pressure. So look at, I have brisket. I, I just love the fact that you get so much brisket when you buy a pack of brisket. I was going to say, so I just warmed it up. You made the brisket, but I feel like warming it up in the bacon grease is just happy. Yeah. Happiness. We have a lot of brisket left. Like I'm thinking even tomorrow, like throw it into the Nova Precision oven and reheat it without it like getting overcooked. But Absolutely. this, I didn't overcook. You cooked it in the bacon grease and it's, it's good. Me. It's not dry at all. Nope. Mmm. 
bacon. I actually like thicker sliced bacon. This is that stuff we bought from Sam's Club. Yeah, it's pretty good. It makes good purse bacon. Yeah, but I don't understand. They're saying this is thick cut bacon. That is not thick cut. Thick cut is like this. Yes, <laughs> I, I like thick cut bacon. It doesn't shrink as much. It. I think it's got a better flavor. What do you like? Do you like thick cut bacon or do you like the regular store bought thin bacon? This does, like you said, make good like traveling bacon. This is really good for like drying too if you want to have like almost like a, a bacon jerky kind of thing. That's what this is really good for. And it cooks up very quickly and I think evenly. Like I can control it. Sometimes mm -hmm. with the thick cut bacon, you do have a little bit of a situation where like one end is great and the other end is is too snotty yeah the key to homemade bacon is having a meat slicer unless you're really good with a knife and getting and i'm not you know getting the the same distance in every single piece but how was your day it was really good i got through all of my meetings and i came home and did like a bunch of crafts and we did um go to the bank and like run all of our errands so i feel really good and now i'm like I'm mentally prepared to go into more like taping and stuff like that for mm -hmm. us to make some videos and everything. But I knew that no matter what, I wanted to eat first. Yeah, because so I won't well, get all. We're out. We're about to eat a whole bunch of xylitol, mm -hmm. and you know it'll be interesting to see the results for the xylitol. And I'm thinking in the future. Let's think about this while I was in the shower. Do you get your best thoughts when you're in the shower? Absolutely. I always do. I, I almost need to have a notepad in the shower because Seriously. by the time I get out of the shower, I forget them. But I didn't forget this one, and right. that is doing a glucose test on xylitol. Mm. We've never done that before. We'll have to do that. And again, it is very, very low on the glycemic index at 13, but it's not zero. Mm -hmm. Now, you can have a spike in insulin without having a spike in glucose. So there's no way to really measure your insulin, but I am curious, does it elevate my glucose at all? And we've never done a test on just eating xylitol, which is pretty much what ice chips are. Right. It's just xylitol with some flavoring. But we've got that. We're gonna film our Black Friday deals, mm -hmm. which should be out by the time you see this video. Um, I'm gonna leave a link for it up here. These are just some of the deals that we know about. I, I'm sure there are other ones, but these are the ones that we know about from companies that we purchase stuff on a regular basis from. There's all kinds of, you know, keto goodies mm -hmm. and staples out there, mm -hmm. but we can only speak of what we've used and right. work, works best for us. Yeah. <laughs> what a long day. Did you have a long day? I feel like it was a really long we day. We got a Cutting, lot done. We filmed the vlog. We filmed the ice chips mm. review video. We did our Black Friday video. I filmed a recipe video, how to make sausage keto stuffing. Let me tell you, it's good. Keto sausage stuffing. It's kind of funny. You keep doing test after test after test. And the last one is the best. The last one is the best. And it happened to be the one that we did on camera. I can't tell you how many times we filmed or, oh, I just made a mess. I can't tell you how many times we've filmed a recipe video and it's perfect and then you do the video itself. And it doesn't wanna work. And it's not working. I'm like, man, like, why couldn't we film the four other attempts we did before we made the video? It's like when the kids like learn to recite something and they've been doing it all week long and then when you want them to do it in front of somebody else, they're like, yeah, no, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing this. We're having some stuffing because this is like a meal. Mm. I mean, there's there's not a lot of bread in it. It's so stinking good. It's very low carb. And I flipping love Maria's bread in this because mm. that stuff is like a life raft that just soaks up everything. Like and it's so funny because I'm not a fan it of down. it in here. But yeah. you are. You just love the fact that it soaks up all that chicken broth. But I love like, the grease. I like stuffing. I want the bread to kind of break down into like a mush, gelatinous paste. No, thank you. And you want chunks of bread in there. I want to know oh, there's some bread in there. Yep. And the celery, when you like cook it down, it's because I'm not a celery fan, but it just adds so much flavor. It, it does add a lot of flavor. And I actually like the little difference in texture. Mm-hmm. 
interesting fact about this, since you don't ever cook the stuffing, mm -hmm. the only seasoning in there is Redmond's organic seasoned salt. There's no extra salt, no pepper. You don't like sage. So I, I don't put sage in there. I don't, I don't like it There's that no. Much. There's nothing else other than the Redmond organic seasoned salt and butter. But that's all and then there the needs and to onion. be because that seasoned salt, it's like the holidays are going on inside of this yeah. canister, right? <laughs> like all of that's why I will just use like a spoonful of it in hot water and it makes the most delicious chicken broth that has no chicken in it. Yeah. It's like so crazy. Well, that is going to be the end of today's vlog. Now, just a reminder uh, for next week, because you will be seeing this before next week, uh, the last couple days of November and the first few days of December, we will not be doing any vlogs uh, because we're going away on a family trip and we want to focus on the family. I'm super excited. So uh, we'll have some videos uploading those days. We will do a little bit of vlogging while we're there, but no videos will be going up until we get home from our trip. And we pick up our full share of beef. Wow. That, so we're that'll be interesting. Quite the souvenir. Yep. If you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we have a full day, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.